Oh, okay. All right, Mitch. So today we're reviewing the Brunswick T Zone and Columbia Beast and the Hammer Raw and the Rhino. Brunswick Rhino. Wait, it's a twist. I said T Zone because you threw oh. it. <laughs> yeah, so these are like the cheapest balls on the market. These are the ones that, not not the cheapest. The cheapest would be like white dots, plastic In terms balls. Those are price point. It's yeah, this is performance. the entry level price point balls, um, but we're going to kind of show you guys why they're still useful, why we still bring them to tournaments. I know last video I said I didn't bring it to a tournament, but the like, house shot tournaments. yeah, like the house shot tournaments, or the centers that especially hook a lot. centers I know like that are wood or centers that hook a lot. Um, I'm definitely going to bring a ball like the Rhino, uh, just because I need something that's not going to hook. And for you, the Beast and Raw are probably similar. Yeah, yeah, it lets me keep uh, my angles pretty straight, longer since they don't hook too much. And yeah, the centers that hook a lot, where you have a high rev rate, yeah, you need those kind of balls. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this is the raw hammer solid. It's got a diff of 033, I think, so it's pretty low. But what I like about this ball is it just lets me keep my angle super straight, regardless of the pattern. You know, I know I can keep it pretty straight and pretty firm. And uh, the, the solid cover stock still lets it pick up, and the low diff still lets it go through the pins really well because it's storing so much energy. And that's what uh, that's what you see when I threw a few shots. I keep my angles really straight, um, and it still went through the pins great. Okay, so this is the Columbia 300 Beast, the uh, purple glitter version, because I always have to go with purple since they strike the most. Uh, this one too, lower diff, like 038 I think. Um, I love this ball. This ball lets me get left and slow hook it. I don't have to throw it slow sometimes, and it just hooks a crap ton. Uh, I love it in centers that hook a lot, because sometimes the, uh, the stronger, more flaring balls, they just kind of get too lazy, whereas this one stores so much energy and it just, Dude, it just crushes the pins, it's ridiculous. two and a half zones left with the with the beast just because it doesn't see the fronts too much so I need to get into a little bit more oil where I can feed it to the right and and let it hook um, that's what it likes to do just because of the low diff the cleaner cover it's not my go-to ball when I want to play straight that's when I'll use the raw hammer when I want to get left and kind of slow hook it uh, that's where the beast comes into play uh, yeah so I'm gonna throw this rhino here in a bit and 
this is a ball, you know, it is a low performance ball. It is one of the cheaper balls that they can get it online for like 90 bucks or something like that. Um, but just because it's at that lower price point doesn't mean it doesn't strike. Uh, I remember bowling a doubles tournament with Mitch. I averaged, I think it was like 273 or 274 with it for an eight game block shooting. You know, I think I had something like 35 strikes in a row. I shot back to back 300. Just because this ball is weak doesn't mean that it's not useful in the right set. So uh, that's kind of what I hope happens out there but you know with us bowling on the US Open pattern who knows the Rhino um, I could use it from pretty deep kind of like Mitch did with the Beast uh, he was able to go pretty deep on the lane hook it a little more because it's so clean through the fronts and it stores that energy um, and then I could also as you guys saw in the lower shots I could move a little bit further left you know play around five six seven with it and really just throw it hard because I know overall it's not gonna hook too much it's gonna hook a lot down lane but overall it's really not gonna hook so this is definitely one of those balls like I said earlier wood centers centers that hook a ton this ball needs to be in my bag um, for sure a tournament ball just it's one of those safety nets just in case options where if the center hooks I need this ball. all right so for those of you guys wondering which pattern we bowled on we bowled on the day two US Open pattern which is one of the harder patterns this year's US Open it was 40 feet pretty much dead flat um, which makes it one of the harder ones to bowl on obviously because it's flat so might have taken us a little while, but once the lane started to break down, I think our ball started to look really good. Um, and that's where most of our shots came from. You know, maybe a game or two games in, that's where we did a lot of our recording. So those were our best, weakest balls and kind of a little insight on how you can use them and why they're so useful to us. Until next time, see you guys later.